Some breaking news from OpenAI as they just released Operator, and I decided to upgrade my account to ChatGPT Pro for $200 so I could test it and make a video for you guys. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts, some important details about Operator that you need to know. I'm also gonna go through some practical examples that you can use Operator for, so be sure to stick around for the entire video. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan, and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you want to know my favorite AI tools and prompts that I use for marketing and content creation, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for this below this video. But now let's get back in to Operator. So OpenAI announced Operator yesterday, January 23rd, and this is one of their very first agents. Now, AI agents is a huge buzzword floating around in 2025, but basically all this means is it can perform tasks for you autonomously without you actually going in and doing any of the busy work. And so here they have a whole press release of what Operator is. I'll be sure to leave a link to this and everything else that I mentioned in the video description below. But what's also important here is I first heard about this on OpenAI's X account. They have a demo video here about a 24 minute video where Sam Altman and other members of the OpenAI team actually walk through what operator is and they also demo it in real time doing real world use cases. And on OpenAI's website, they do a very good job of explaining what Operator is in layman's terms. I'd recommend just reading these three paragraphs right here. That's a very good high-level overview right on their Operator page, which you can find in the description below. But really what this is, it's an AI agent that can go to the web and perform tasks for you. So it uses its own browser. It can look at a web page and interact with it by typing, clicking, and scrolling. Now, the very first iteration that I saw of something like this was called Claude Computer Use. This was an update released by Anthropic in October of 2024. Really shocked the AI community. I couldn't believe what I saw when I watched this for the first time. But Operator seems to be an improved version of Claude Computer Use. And I'll leave the video to Claude Computer Use in the description below if you want to kind of compare and see what I'm talking about here. But OpenAI appears to have taken this to another level. Now, when it comes to practicality and real-world tasks, well, what can you even use Operator for? Well, think about this. Repetitive browser tasks, as OpenAI defines it, right? Filling out forms, ordering groceries, creating memes, booking travel, uh, ordering out at a restaurant, or even like booking a table or a reservation at a restaurant, doing some analysis on competitors, doing research, right? I'm just spitballing here of just some use cases that I'm thinking of. I'm going to dive into some of these in more detail here shortly. But what's also important to talk about is access. I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, I did have to upgrade my account to ChatGPT Pro, which costs $200 a month, and it's also only available in the United States right now. So even if you're a pro user outside of the US, you probably won't have access to Operator, but it says right here they plan to expand this to plus team and enterprise users and integrate these capabilities to ChatGPT in the future. Now, I probably will downgrade back to ChatGPT Plus definitely if this comes into it. But even for general users, I'm not sure Operator is worth a $200 a month subscription to ChatGPT Pro. So now let's get to the good stuff and explore Operator. And what I noticed right away is the interface looks exactly the same as ChatGPT. The prompting box looks identical. There's a, a vision capability where we can upload files to Operator. There's a sidebar. There's a bell icon for tasks and progress. You could create a new conversation right here, right? Very similar to what we get in ChatGPT. And also the sub, this is just a subdomain of ChatGPT. It's operator.chatgpt.com. And so when it comes to the cat categories of operator that it's available right now, we have dining and events, delivery, local services, shopping, travel, and then also news, which the news one is interesting to me because I don't know if operator is really a good fit for something like that. I'd rather use chat GPT scheduled task functionality if I want to get news every day, every week, etc. So I don't know about that one yet. But anyways, what's also interesting to point out is there are only certain applications or brands that are compatible with operator right now. So on dining and events, we have StubHub, right, for sports or concert tickets. We have OpenTable for booking reservations at restaurants, all recipes, right? And for delivery, we have Uber Eats, Instacart, DoorDash. I think those are the only three right now. Uh, local services, Thumbtack, Uber. I would expect maybe TaskRabbit or something to get on here. Uh, for shopping, we have Etsy, eBay, Target, 
Um, I'd expect hopefully Amazon, Walmart, some of those retailers to get on here as well. For travel, we have TripAdvisor, Priceline, Booking.com, uh, Hip Camp. I've never heard of that one. I know Airbnb is on here too, I think. So maybe there's more applications that they aren't listing on this main categories page. And then for news, they have a bunch of different sources, probably the companies that they've partnered with uh, to avoid legal issues down the road, if you know what I'm talking about. So first, let's kick things off with a simple travel example. And what I'm going to do is prompt operator with the following. Book me an Airbnb for two people in Daytona Beach, Florida for two nights, February 1st through the 3rd, preferably under $200 a night. And then I'm going to click enter. And the first important thing here that I want to explain is like anything with AI, whether it's operator, it's chat GPT, the more specific and granular we can get with these prompts, the better outputs that we're going to get. And so what's going on right here is operator by itself opened up a browser in the cloud and it went to Airbnb's website. My, my hand is completely off my mouse, my keyboard. It is doing this all on its own. And so what you can do is you can actually take control if you want to just dive in and start doing this yourself, or you can expand this. I'm actually going to expand this window here so you can see what operator is doing. It went to Airbnb's website by itself. You'll see right there, it just typed in Daytona Beach by itself. And now it's looking at the dates and filling out all the other information that I requested in the prompt. My biggest thing about operator right now, or the biggest downside would have to be the speed. On the left-hand side, you'll see here what it's doing. I can click the drop down button and it's giving all the notes and thoughts as it's doing this in real time. Accessing Airbnb, searching Daytona Beach, uh, setting guests to two, clicking, yada, 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 right? So what this is going to do is it's going to get all the way up to the point where I need my account information. Obviously, it doesn't know my Airbnb login. It doesn't have my payment information. I'm assuming at some point they'll have all of this integrated with the supported applications like Airbnb, but right now it's probably going to take me up to that point where I need to fill out more personal information. So I'm going to skip ahead and wait after that part is complete. All right, so this did take a couple minutes, but Operator did find me an Airbnb in Daytona Beach under the different details that I was looking for. It said we found one for the total cost of $208.92. Um, so what I can do now is I can actually go in here and click Take Control. So if I click Take Control, it says you now have control. So what this means, and this is honestly, I, I didn't know what was going on here at first, is I actually have control of this browser inside Operator. I thought at first it was going to take me to a new window on my own browser where I could finish up from there. But you'll see here, I can click in, create a new tab. I can go to any website I want. Or in this example, what I can do is I can click continue. I can, you know, log in with my Google account, uh, an email, et cetera, et cetera, explore other options. So I'm actually using the browser built into operator. So that's a, a first example that I wanted to show you of how you could use this to help book something like travel. So a few other important details I want to share with you here are on the top right. If I click share, you can actually create a video of this entire process that operator just did to book me an Airbnb. You'll see it's preparing a video right here. I can even publish it and share that URL with whoever I want. And if, yeah, here's the video right here. So now it just made me a video and it's speeding it up too of what operator just did. And if I go back another option up here, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go ahead and click that uh, task here. And you can also save this task. If I click save task, give it whatever title you want, uh, whatever descriptions you are instructions, make sure those instructions are detailed. Like I mentioned earlier, we want quality inputs and you can also provide any URLs. So you can enter Airbnb. Maybe next time you want to do Verbo or some hotel booking website. I don't know, but you can click save and we can actually start saving tasks inside operator. So now let's do another example. And this time, let's say you want to use operator to help you buy something online. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt it with the following. Find me the best headphones for podcasting under $100 on Amazon. And I'm going to click enter. So here we go again, right? It's opening up a browser on the cloud. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this window here. And it looks like it's typing in Amazon on Bing search. It didn't actually type in Amazon.com. That's really interesting. Um, and so that's another important thing to call out here is obviously they're going to use Bing search versus Google search with the partnership that they have going on with Microsoft. It'll probably just be Bing search by default, unless you specifically say go to google.com and search this. 
So now right here, it's on Amazon. So what it's doing is it's going up into the search bar. And again, my hands are off the, the mouse. I'm not doing anything here. And it's looking through like you would see on a typical search results page on Amazon. So now it's analyzing what are the best headphones for podcasting like we would, right? If we're shopping for an item like this. So what it's doing right now is it's going to the price bar. And if I click this down button, you can see all the different things it's doing. It's doing the price filter to $100 like I asked for. Um, and so now it's getting, uh, so it's taking a little bit to load here. So it is a little slow waiting. And so then after about 30 to 60 seconds of waiting and it, as it was scrolling and kind of analyzing the different options here for headphones, you'll notice on the left-hand side, it provides six different options. It gives the price. And what's also interesting is it includes the product link. So if I click this, this is gonna take me on my own browser to this page. Same with all the other product links here. Now, again, I could take control in the browser on operator and do it that way, uh, but I actually kind of like this functionality a little better. It makes it easier. Now, I don't know right now if I would do what I just did in operator versus me going myself to Amazon and looking at it that way and purchasing a product like headphones myself. Um, but again, I could see this becoming faster over time. It's just really slow as it's trying to process all that data and then kind of move the mouse and analyze the different pricing options. So again, you can share it, save the task like I showed you in the first example, but that's just another quick example of how you can use operator is for shopping online. So I could show you a dozen more examples just like that, but for this final example, I'm gonna do something a little more practical when it comes to marketing, content, and business related for what I do. I'm gonna prompt operator with the following. Run an SEO analysis on my website, and I gave it the URL right here. Provide unbiased feedback of your top five takeaways of what I should work on next to improve my search rankings basically telling operator to run an SEO audit of my website. And because I know this is going to take some time, what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm gonna skip ahead when this is done and I'll actually create a video so we can play this in kind of a higher playback speed and I'll show you what operator did. So I'm gonna skip ahead and then come back when this is done. All right, so Operator has fully completed its SEO analysis of my website. And I went ahead and created a video of everything here. It's only a minute 15 with everything sped up. The whole process did take about five minutes and probably a little longer than that, honestly. So I really like this video feature the more that I'm using it. I published it. So if you guys wanna view the full minute 15 video, I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm gonna go ahead and play this so you can see what Operator did in terms of an SEO analysis. And so what it did right away here is it went to Bing search and it searched for free online SEO analysis tool and Neil Patel's website was first. It also went to seooptimizer.com and it plugged in my website for each one. And so here you'll see it's running an SEO analysis uh, on both of these websites in real time. So it went through this one, it's going through all the different steps. I'm not gonna play the rest of this, you guys get the idea, but this is another use case that we can do for operator is running a content analysis, an SEO analysis, doing any sort of research on the internet, just some use cases I want you to start thinking about. So now I wanna hear what you guys have to say about OpenAI's operator in the comments below. I think overall, while this is a very revolutionary tool and it will only get better as time goes on, I think for $200 a month, for the average user, this probably isn't worth it right now. I look at some of these menial browser tasks, uh, booking a reservation for a restaurant, booking a flight, booking a hotel, et cetera. I could probably do that faster on my own time than what Operator is doing right now. But the big difference there is Operator can actually run these tasks in the background if I wanna go off and do something else. That is the main purpose of Operator and these AI agents. Again, it is very slow. There's a lot of hiccups still. So for that $200 a month price point, I don't think this is worth it for the average user. Something else that's relevant as I cap off this video is I would expect to see other AI companies start to follow suit and create their own versions of agents similar to what Operator is with OpenAI. We have Perplexity announcing Perplexity Assistant yesterday, January 23rd. We have DeepSeek coming out with its new R1 DeepThink model, which apparently is better than OpenAI's O1 model, and it's a free open source LLM. So, I mean, there are so many things going on right now with Operator, with other AI. AI companies coming out with their own versions of agents, and it's really exciting to see how this plays out.
And if you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate you. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, just to thank me, I guess, for getting that $200 subscription so I could play around with Operator and make a video for you guys. I'm probably gonna go back and downgrade to Plus. There aren't really a lot of use cases right now that I have for Operator. Again, I just got it so I, I could make a video for you guys watching on YouTube. But most importantly, I hope all of you have a great day.